Hey guys, Ivan here, and this video we are starting with a Seth Ferrosi physique update. And guys, even though he looks amazing right here, Seth is no longer an active bodybuilder. So it's been a while since he competed last. Here in these photos, he looks he looks sick, he looks crazy, he looks so bubbly, so round. And the thing is, when he stopped training, of course, he did not continue pushing the gear for no reason, for no specific goal. He decided to stop with the gear. He actually went on TRT, of course, and that is literally the same as, for example, when a 20 or a 30 year old uh, goes completely off. So he's in his 40s, I believe, and at that age, you know, he, he cannot produce any more of a natural testosterone, probably, after, I'm sure he cannot, after the, the years of, of abuse of, of gear. So now he's, it seems like he's, maybe he's gonna come back, I don't know. He didn't make any official statements, but here you can see that he says, I have fallen back in love with the process. And he says he loves it. So it seems like he is back in that groove. And you don't look like this just by accident. This is hardcore, heavy training, and I'm sure his diet is on point. And yeah, he's, as far as I know, on TRT, but maybe he started using more. Maybe instead of those regular around... 200 milligrams of test, he went on like 400, 500. Some people take that much and they say they are on TRT. But I mean, yeah, it's TRT compared to like using uh, 5 grams of gear. <laughs> That's probably how much Seth was taking when he was at his prime. But it's still uh, not, uh, not, not a human level, not a normal uh, level that you would get naturally. So if he went a little bit over... It shows, I don't know, it could be just diet and the training, but he looks bigger, he looks fuller, rounder, I'm guessing he's on more juice. I don't know, I might be mistaken, but that's just my assumption based on this photo. Here's another one that he posted. So as you can see, he still has the fullness everywhere. The calves are looking big and full, uh, as far as the upper body, he's, he's, he's round, and also the legs, I mean, now you can see his legs. So legs is something that usually goes away first when the guys retire, even though they train them very hard, you know, it's just what happens with age and simply being um, overrun, you know, with years of heavy training and everything. That's the first thing that goes away, usually. But in Seth's case, it's not. It's not going away. His legs are looking absolutely ridiculous. They're looking really, really freaking impressive. They remind me a little bit of Kai Green's legs. So, I don't know. I mean, you guys can see his uh, training split right here. Do you think this is achievable or actually maintainable naturally or on TRT? I don't know, he might be planning a comeback. Here's another one. So you can see that, yeah, he lost that, that fullness, the size overall that he once had. But he still has, you know, he didn't really lose the fullness. He just lost the, the volume, the size of his entire body. He still has the fullness. And uh, he still has that pop, you know, that hard, hard kind of muscle. So, are we looking at a creation of another giant killer? I mean, we talked about this uh, recently quite often. It seems like the 212 guys are just doing really well in the open. And here's another example. Aside from what we're gonna see from Flex Lewis and uh, Derek Lansford when they eventually do it, now we have Seth Verosi as well. And Seth Verosi is a really good competitive bodybuilder. Like, he could have won that Mr. Olympia if he really wanted it. So if he came back now, I can see him do great stuff. And he looks amazing right here. Tell me what you guys think about Seth right now. Do you think he's on something or he's really on TRT? Do you think he's going to come back? And if he does, how well will he do? Can he be like top 5 at the Mr. Olympia in 212? Can he win 212 shows? Can he win open shows? Whatever your thoughts are on Seth, tell me down below in the comment section. Alright, next we have somebody who hasn't really been a topic lately who we didn't really speak a lot about. Not just me on my channel, but other channels as well. Other social media outlets. Uh, so it seems like Kai Green here is starting to fade away. Not a lot of people are talking about him. And I'm sure you guys, many of you guys prefer it that way. But when I see a post like this, how can I not, how can I not post this? How can I not talk about this? When I was looking at this, I, was the, I, was, I spent some time watching this for this video. So, it's interesting for me, and I hope you guys feel the same way. So, he asked us in the, in the, in the, in the caption, uh, what do you call this pose? And somebody said, most photoshopped. So as you can see, his arms do definitely seem odd. 
James Collins here also had an interesting uh, comment, <laughs> but uh, what I found interesting here is uh, the, the the arm, right? So you can see right there on his, especially on his left tricep, it seems, and, and shoulder as well, and biceps too probably, I don't know, I could be mistaken, I'm not sure actually, but it seems like it has been photoshopped, that, that arm, but maybe not, I mean, Kai is a freak, right? And in this photo right here, this video, I'm sure this is recent, That that's the first thing, I don't know, I mean, he didn't specify anything, and as I said, he's starting to fade away, so he better find some way to, you know, get some attention from the, from the media and the public. Anyways, if this is recent, if this is now, which I, I mean, I, I would believe it if he told us that, but he didn't say anything, so I'm guessing it's old. Uh, he looks in really good shape. This seems like he, like, maybe 2016 prep for the Arnold. Maybe that's the time when he posted it. I, I think I remember. I'm not sure. But if this is recent, if this is how he looks right now, then I'll just go and say it again. He can win the Mr. Olympia. He can win Arnold Classic this year. He can win the Mr. Olympia later. Uh, he looks absolutely ridiculous in, in this video right here. So if this was when he was active bodybuilder, I'm, I'm saying that mainly because of the body fat percent here, because he's pretty much shredded. So this could be like five days before the show or like a few days after. In any case, this physique looks awesome. It looks amazing. And if we forgot his personality, that he has been lying to us, that he has been promising stuff that he didn't deliver, if you just forget what kind of a person Kai Green is, and the fact that this was probably not taken uh, recently, it's probably an older video, you can just admire this physique for a second, because it does look really impressive, and it's a pity, it's really a shame that he never won the Mr. Olympia, and he had a couple of opportunities. He might have one next year as well, I don't, I don't, I, I don't expect it, but I hope I will see Kai on stage one more time before he retires officially. We got a word from James Hollingshead, who is over there at the Redcon 1 headquarters, and he sees Kai Green almost every day, and he says that Kai is still training very, very hard, and he is eating a ton of food, especially protein. They, they talk about him consuming like 800 grams of protein, like after cardio and after training. So he is still crazy about bodybuilding, and I'm sure he's maintaining this, this kind of shape, not just for himself, but just in case, in case he competes. That's what I believe, I'm optimistic. It probably won't happen, but I would love it to happen once again, to see Kai on stage one more time. This is what a truly retired bodybuilder looks like. Dennis Wolf right here. So, Dennis Wolf, he was a mass monster back in the day. He was tall and he was huge for his height. He was over 300 pounds in the offseason easily. He was like probably 320, something like that, 330 maybe. You know, there are photos when he was in offseason, he looked humongous. And this is him right now. This is what a bodybuilder looks like when he's not tracking all of his meals throughout the day, when he's not training super hard, especially if it is somebody who has crazy, super fast metabolism like Dennis right here. But the point here is, uh, like, this is what you get when you retire, really. This is how much smaller you get. He's still in great shape. He still has great biceps, he still has great arms, shoulders, back and everything, but he's just not a, a freak, an absolute freak. When you see him on the street, you would say, well, wow, this guy has nice physique, great muscle, he's built up, sure, but you wouldn't say, what the hell is that, like you once would for this guy when he was 330 or whatever his weight was. So that, that's just the point here, I mean, if somebody is looking as big as Kai, they're probably planning at least on competing and at some point. And if somebody is looking like Dennis here, yeah, even if he wanted to come back, he would probably never be able to get to that old size back because he had a lot of size and the fullness was just amazing. That's something that goes away with age. I don't think that's the case with Kai Green, not as much. But as far as Dennis, yeah, he looks great. He looks fit. He looks uh, muscular, sure. Maybe he could do like a classic physique division now, but you know, uh, he was one of the biggest bodybuilders of all time and uh, he's definitely no longer that. And that's great for him. There are many retired bodybuilders who just can't let it go, who always want to be big and that's why they have health problems. So Dennis figured that out, he turned his ego down, he accepted the fact that he won't be the biggest guy in the gym every time he walks in. He accepted the fact that he's going to look like an average, an average gym goer or like a really fit, really fit guy. 
But yeah, this is what it looks like when they retire. So if they're training and everything, and I'm sure Dennis is, but he's just probably not eating a lot of stuff and doing you know a lot or any juice. So here you go, Dennis Wolf 2021 update. All right, next we have Ramon Dino. Uh, he's a top five Olympian who just won the Big Man Pro Show. And he won the Classic Physique Division, of course, and he qualified for the Mr. Olympia once again. And he looked absolutely ridiculous. Like he brought his conditioning to a really good level. And this video, apparently, whoever was filming this was looking at him, was mesmerized by his presence, and wasn't even paying attention to what what the phone was filming. And so you can't really see much. Just a second. All right, you can see something. So you can see basically that his physique. You're gonna see it in a moment again. You can see that his physique. Yeah, look at this. He's absolutely amazing. He was peeled. He has great structure. He has great symmetry, great proportions, great completeness overall. And amazing, look at this, an amazing classic physique. So he was fifth last year at the Mr. Olympia. How well will he do next year? Now, is this like a bodybuilder that can actually take out some of the top three guys? Yes, I can easily see him challenge actually even Chris Bumstead. Why not? Why not? There is still a lot of work to be done, of course. But is there potential? I can definitely see it. I don't see what is wrong with his physique. It just takes, you know, a little bit more muscle, just maturity, just, you know, training a couple of more years, and he will be... He can he can definitely challenge Chris Bumstead. Starting with his height, then his great arms, great biceps, overall great shape, great flow, great vacuum, nice rib cage, full muscle bellies, just overall really an impressive physique that I can easily see cracking the top two, for example, at the Mr. Olympia. So, for example, you have Brion Ainsley, who was third, who could have been second, arguably, question mark, or how many weeks uh, to, to say psh to this look. So, he is a certain number of weeks out of a show. And which show it is? Because he looks shredded here. He looks peeled. I don't know, he didn't lose any conditioning, it seems like. This, this, this doesn't happen just easily. I'm sure he tried really hard. And he says he's a certain number of weeks out of a show. So when they say weeks, they usually don't mean months and months. Like, it's probably not Mr. Olympia. It's probably not even Arnold. Those, uh, I mean, yeah, you can always count in weeks. But why would you if there is like four months until a show? Or more. So I'm guessing he's going to be competing sometime before that. Which show can it be? I don't know. Anyways, uh, Brion Ainsley was third, so he could have been second. It's him and Terence Ruffin in that top three. But the point that I'm trying to make is that this guy right here... Hmm. But the point that I'm trying to make is that Roma... But the point that I'm trying to make is that uh, Ramon Dino is much bigger of a prospect than Brion Ainsley. He's very classic, Brion not that much, sure he's classic enough, but not super super classic, while Ramon is. But this guy right here, Robert Timms, also known as Mr. Classic Physique on Instagram, is not classic, I don't find him classic, those legs are too small, too veiny, no lateral head, so the legs are just taking away a lot from his physique, and the upper body... He looks huge, he looks crazy, he looks insane, look at this, this is the most muscular, this is the pose that they don't do in classic physique. You know, he, he looks huge, he looks really big, round, but classic? No, no, and a lot of you guys can say I'm hating, but I've been telling this before the Mr. Olympian, where did he place? I don't know where he placed, he, he wasn't in top 5. People were talking before the Mr. Olympia, this guy is gonna challenge Chris Bumstead, he's great, he's better than Brion, he's better than Terence. No, no, he's not. Maybe he looks like that on the photos. Maybe he did look really good on some shows, but at the Mr. Olympia, when it counts, he wasn't really that great. Overall, he has a lot of muscle, a lot of tissue. Not in legs, in the upper body. Having small legs is maybe even okay in classic physique. It's definitely less of a flaw than it would be in the open. But here in this post, uh, he's joking about moving to the open. He says, open is calling my name. And uh, look at his look at his weight. Like he is a big, big guy, over 260. So I don't know. I mean, we'll see what he's gonna do. I hope eventually he will switch to the open, but he still needs to add a lot more muscle. I mean, upper body, it's fine. It could go to Mr. Olympia, 
but the legs, the legs need to come up, and he knows that very well, I'm sure he's training them very hard, hopefully whatever he's doing is gonna work out in the end, and he will successfully transfer to the open division, because in classic physique, he has no business, in my opinion, I am not saying he cannot make any money, I'm just saying he can't be as good of a competitor as he would if he did something else differently, if he actually gained a lot more muscle and did the open, I think that would be the right decision for him if he is willing to go through something like that. Anyways guys, that's gonna do it for this video, if you enjoyed it, like it, and for more videos like this, subscribe to my channel. Thank you guys for watching, all the best, and bye bye.